Hello everyone, my name is James Coleman and I'm the Maxwell Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. The Centre for Design Technology staff and students provide courses, equipment, consultancy and research in product design at the University of Brighton. Hello everyone and today I'd like to cover EV number or exposure value number. And like many of the other settings in Maxwell Render, this is a setting which is a throwback from real world photography and it's used as an overall guide as to how much light there is in a particular image or technically it's how much light is reaching the sensor of a camera or the film of a camera but in Maxwell this is obviously not the case and it is the equivalent of how much light is reaching the sensor or film of a camera. It's found in camera parameters and optics, it's over here on, on my screen, it's on the left uh, remember you have to have a camera selected in the first place in order to edit it and like the other real world values which you find in um, Maxwell Render it's kind of not a debatable topic, it's kind of this or this um, there are common values which you can just plug in and use or in a lot of the cases you can fine tune it but most of the time it's just quickly finding what's right and then you leave it at that let me talk you through this scene uh, quickly first of all. This uh, coincidentally was um, one of my uh, second year projects. Uh, adjustable sunglasses for sufferers of chronic hypersensitivity. Uh, hit quite a first if you're wondering. And um, in the viewport if you go to uh, perspective and I'll just have a quick look around the scene. Uh, this is the high dynamic range image which is providing light to the scene. Uh, make sure that display sky is on, shortcut is K. So you'll be able to see um, the high dynamic range image which is uh, providing the illumination to this scene. The image itself is selected over in the environment window. Um, in Maxwell 2.6, which is what this is, uh, the environment type has to be image based and then you select the background um, map it's called um, in here and I will provide a link to this um, uh, studio uh, high dynamic range image uh, it was made by uh, a user called Zbig on DeviantArt and there are a great bunch of uh, images and then reflection refraction illumination is just set to the same as background I've had to offset the map by 300 degrees purely so that um, the where the back where the camera would go is uh, basically behind my virtual camera. Um, I like to set up my um, models like this where you have the model itself orientated uh, correctly if you like um, facing uh, exactly on the um, the z-axis in this case uh, and then have the camera offset. Some people like to do it the other way around and they have the camera facing um, uh, uh, sorry, parallel to the axis and then they rotate the model but this is just my preferred um, workaround and I have to uh, offset the map for that reason. Uh, the other settings in this scene are basic uh, camera settings focal length of 50 because it's not particularly small, not particularly big um, and the f-stop of 32 uh, nice and high so that you, you're you not getting any um, blurred uh, parts of the object. It might be too high for realism but uh, that was just uh, how it had to be in this case. It's a pack shot um, image so uh, basically all I wanted was um, uh, just a white background and the product or the object very very clear in shot. Um, uh, and so the EV number itself in this case is 8 and what EV number does is it's a sort of constant which will alter your other values to um, accommodate it. So basically if I have my f-stop at 32, uh, which is what I want my f-stop to be, uh, I don't need to worry about what my shutter is because um, shutter speed will only really come into effect in Maxwell when you're looking at um, animations or moving objects in stills which uh, this obviously isn't. And ISO again isn't really um, used that much, at least not in this scene. Um, it's currently at 130, I can't remember why to be brutally honest. Um, it, this is an old, old well, yeah this is an old model, file, you know this is over a year old now so I don't know why I said it's at 130 but um, because I've got lock exposure enabled up here in optics, if I actually drop this um, ISO down 
to you know a nice round number 100. You can see my shutter actually um, adjusts to accommodate that and my EV number stays the same. You always want, well, almost always you want lock exposure enabled. I think it's disabled by default so make sure to enable it because otherwise you play around with all of these settings and EV number will change and you don't really want that. The advantage of using lock exposure and EV number was say I did want to change my f-stop so I get a nice and low 5.6 to um, get a nice blurred background. You can see the um, further, further away parts of the model are starting to blur now. My EV number is exactly the same. Let's uh, change it back to uh, an f-stop of 32 and then disable lock exposure. If I change my f-stop to 5.6 my EV number goes through the roof. Well, um, it's it's actually inverse. So actually, my EV number plummets, um, but my exposure goes uh, through the roof. Um, so remember that that a low EV number is a uh, high exposure. Put the f-stop back to 32 and lock the exposure again. When you're working with pack shot images like this, it's actually um, nice and easy to just double check that um, your exposure value is correct. Uh, if I uh, show you in render options over here I've got devignetting enabled at 100% in the Simulens menu and basically if I disable that you might be able to see but probably not because of um, the high f-stop in this uh, image you might be able to see that there's a little uh, darkening at the edges that's what um, vignetting is again it's a photographic effect it's a throwback from photography uh, Maxwell Render puts that in automatically for us but we can take it out with devignetting and I set it to 100% in packshot images because that's the point of packshot images um, that uh, they are pure white just the product on a pure white background but let's say I wanted to check that uh, my image is um, exactly uh, the exposure exactly right. Uh, just double check the floor material um, is uh, 255 on HSV, or 205, 205, 205 in RGB. So it's pure white, which um, you can get away with sometimes in, f uh, in floor material, roughness 100%. Um, some people would say that that's a very bad idea, that it's going to be very noisy. Nowadays it's actually not so noisy, especially if you're just having it on the floor material. Um, I I wouldn't put something like that on a model, but just on a floor, you know, it's it's fine until um, next limit make a shadow catcher. <coughs> I really want shadow catchers in Maxwell. Come on, guys. Um, but if I uh, pop the EV number down to actually no, I'm going to put it up to nine, and you can visually see that um, the the uh, image is darker. However, if I use um, digital color meter to just check, um, this is a if you're wondering, this is just a utility program in a Mac OS X. I just use it to check the um, color value of the pixels, and you know, hovering around 200-ish, um, and that's not what I want. And so I go back to Studio and uh, pop the EV number down to eight. Wait for Fire to um, render it a little bit, and then double check the. Uh, It's rendering out now 25344. And yeah, by the time it's actually rendered up and uh, got rid of most of the noise, it is 255. So that's definitely the right exposure. Um, one note I would say is that sometimes you can go, you know, to perhaps a half EV number, you know, um, 8.5 or 9.7 or something, you know, really random. I normally wouldn't bother with that too much. Um, sometimes EV numbers can, you know, jump quite drastically, but the majority of the time, they just uh, it's 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 not worth you know fiddling around. You know, I wouldn't put eight point one two nine. You know, I wouldn't fiddle with it to that extent. Um, if eight is too bright, then I'll use nine. If nine really is too dark, then I might use eight point five. But really and truly just stick to um, single numbers, it makes life a lot easier. In terms of what EV number to actually use, obviously it's going to be dependent on your scene. Um, what I would do, just to recap slightly, is to lock exposure, put ISO at 100, f-stop at whatever you need, don't worry about shutter, and then just use EV to control your exposure. Um, the actual EV you would want is dependent on the scene, but normally product design images will be between 8 and 12 EV. Um, for 
other images, say for example, other typically brighter um, settings like you know outdoors. Say you've got an, an architectural render, then you want a higher EV to give a darker um, image because you want a lower exposure. Uh, typically, uh, 14, 16, something like that. You can go as you know as, as I've seen as high as that. Put it that way. Um, but there's a you know there's nice there, there's a nice lot of uh, lists online. Um, uh, there's a big list on Wikipedia as far as I know, and um, I'll link to that. And basically that's that. Uh, just make sure you get your EV number right, um, lock exposure, ignore shutter, define your f-stop, leave an ISO 100 and use EV to control the exposure of your scene. Thanks very much, see you again soon. For more information about Maxwell Render training at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology, email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com.